hour yesterday, the agonizing wait for almost 58,000 Irish students ended with the release of the Leaving Cert results. But with the economy on a downward spiral and more and more young people emigrating, what future employment opportunities are available for school leavers? Hugh Murray from Sigma Recruitment joins us now to talk us through the sectors that are continuing to grow and to prove that opportunities still exist in Ireland for young people. Hugh, good morning to you. Thank morning. you very much for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. A, a, a lot of young people, if they were reading the news and following the media and everything else, might be thinking, I have no option but to emigrate. There are no jobs for me here. That is not the case. There are jobs and we're going to spend Specify the areas that they're in this morning. Well, rather you are. So certainly. first up, no problem. Well, look, there, there's certainly opportunities in all this, in a lot of sectors in, in the Irish economy at the moment, particularly the ICT, IT sector, pharm, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, medical technologies, and also for, uh, financial services. There's quite growth in there. But I suppose the big thing leaving cert students should really look at is that look they're only at the start of their career. What, what they're looking at now, maybe going into college or whatever, in three, four, five years' time, the economy would be a lot different than it is now. For arguments like people who were getting into law maybe four or five years ago would have thought they had the best career in the world, and then, um, then when the economy crashed, there was a lot, lot less opportunities. But even then, you see a lot of solicitors going into compliance and risk and audit and things like that, where there are a lot of opportunities for them as well. So it's really about being flexible. But I suppose the big thing in relation to people is that look at what they're really interested in, what are they good at, and then target themselves towards careers in that area and I suppose that's the biggest piece of advice I give anybody who's um, looking to get into a career. Which is great and would a lot of these jobs for instance like parents of oh you're not going to college what are you going to do? Would a lot of these jobs help you on that career path? Or is it only the big companies do this whereby you sign up maybe to go to IT yeah. and they'll put you through uni at yeah. night maybe? What is, some of them do. Now I suppose if, you, if you're not, a lot of those uh, companies are, are like financial service, pharmaceuticals and stuff, they require a prerequisite of having a, a college uh, education. Okay. But I suppose that's not for everybody and look that doesn't suit everybody but there's loads of opportunities for people, education may not be for them, or else they may not know what they want to do. So what I would generally recommend people, there's no substitute for hard work. So going out, getting a start in maybe a hotel, maybe in a retail business, doing some work, because employers really, really appreciate people who have gone out and got, off, up, got up off their bum and got up some work to do, and uh, to build some communication skills, how to deal with customers, how to deal with complaints. These are all transferable skills in every industry, and any young person should really try and develop that, because we're seeing employers, they're saying the biggest skill gap for young people is that communication You're screaming skills. at me here, you're screaming at me in one sense that if I have a leaving cert and I don't have qualifications, it's a sales course maybe I'm heading down or it's a sales job that well, I'm heading can. into. Well, certainly, well, look, I, I work in recruitment and I, you don't have to have any prerequisite for that. Okay. The main part is to be able to sell, deal with people on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I've worked in hospitality before then, um, which you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to have any qualification to do that either. You can go work in a bar as a chef. Depending on what your personality is, there's options there for everybody. It's really about you yourself going out to be targeted what you want to do. Career, like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because a lot of the sectors career. we're talking about here, the ICT sector, pharmaceuticals, mm. I mean, these are Special quite specific and quite mm. specialised, as Aidan said. These sure. are people who are going on to third level. Yeah, these are uh, specifically yeah. for people going yeah. on to third level. Now, there are jobs in there on administrative things, logistics and stuff that people can do without qualifications in that area. But I suppose with Ireland investing in the knowledge economy, these are essentially what the IDA are bringing into the country. So they're trying to grow the business in those areas. But I suppose if people don't want to go on to those types of areas, there's loads of other options that people can do. And I'm sure some of the best people I've met in my life have no qualifications either. You can go into entrepreneurial spirit, customer services, administration. There's loads and loads so of options. So if someone comes into you and they present to you with a CV or one of your sure. colleagues yep. and um, they want to move into some sector and they have no qualifications in that sector, yep. would you view them very differently to somebody who does have qualifications? Well, it really or do you take them on face value? Well, we take them a lot on face value. Um, I suppose it really depends on the job they're going for because I suppose a lot of, lot, as I said before, a lot of the companies, a qualification is a prerequisite. But uh, only last week I placed a girl who had just done a leaving cert. She moved herself, got into a cashier's job in customer service, then moved into investment banking, and now she's working in corporate trust. So she, doesn't, she has no qualification and was able to do it. But it was really about her, her interest going in, picking up the skills at the bottom, then working your way up. The biggest thing you have to understand is that when you're going into start, you're not going to go into the most dynamic job in the world. Mm. You're going to have to get your hands dirty. Start at the bottom line. Exactly, work and work your way up. But the thing is that if, if you're interested in the subject matter that you're doing, you're more likely to succeed. Do you think people's it. expectations are slightly unrealistic? It's interesting that you said that. Do you think people think, right, okay, I've done the school bit, or I'm going to fly the plane? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm mm. going to walk into that top job and get yes. such and such a wage. Really? Well, look, I fell into that trap myself as well, unfortunately. I remember I, I tried to get into the financial service, and I thought I went into fund accounting myself, and I thought I was going to be Gordon Deco, bang, <laughs> bang, bang, stocks and shares, and making loads of money. And then I realised, actually, it's an accounting job, and you're sitting down at a desk, and you're accounting for these funds. So my expectation of thinking what I was 
was going to be like in five years um, and what the reality was. So it's really a, very important that you really look at the jobs and sectors that you're doing, that you understand that your personality and your aptitude and attitude is correct for that industry before you go into it. Yeah. 80,000 jobs in the green sector, there's possibly. There's a huge amount of jobs. It could be, well, it really depends on the investment that goes into it, but there's a potential for 80,000 jobs. And I suppose with the increased cost of energy at the moment as well, it's really something that we have to invest in because I suppose uh, energy is getting so expensive we can start creating our own. We're not as, as, uh, as uh, on, on international um, energy can, to can us. you spot the entrepreneur when he or she walks in? Certainly, is, is yeah. Well, easy? You, well, you can spot the person. I, I, to be honest, as you said earlier on in relation to qualification, I can tell within 30 seconds of meeting somebody whether this person is going to get a job or not because you can see the interest, the spark in the eye. This is what I really want to do. And anybody, even in the worst recession up to 18 months ago, I could always tell, even if you had the qualification or the best experience in the world, the right attitude and targetedness, you can get any job. So you let want me to ask get you this, Steve. Two people that you send out to get a job, one person has every qualification, takes all the boxes, mm. doesn't communicate well. Other person, no qualifications, but wants the job, hard grafter, ticks all the boxes from a communication point of view. Will they get the job? But it depends on the sector, but yes, I, I, I personally would definitely hire that person myself, yeah. but I suppose it really depends on the speciality you're going into. But yeah, definitely, if you were a manager, that's the person you want. You want the person who's going to get their, their, their hands dirty, the person who's going to get involved. That's great for school leavers now who aren't going on to third level, oh, who are going into the job sector. You're, you're much better to get up and start working. If education is not for yourself, get up and get a job. There's loads of opportunities out there, whether it be going into the, the new internship scheme that the government have put in, or even I've, I've seen a lot of uh, young graduates or people just coming out of school saying, look, I'll work for free for a month or two and prove themselves, show them I can work. Yeah. We have one there recently ourselves. We have a, a graduate that came in who uh, went to an internship program and she, we've now, she's invaluable. We can't do without her. Yeah. So, look, okay. there's definitely opportunities there. It's just really about your attitude. Get your and foot attitude in the there. door. Work exactly. for free, get your foot in the door. That's where exactly. I started. Yeah. Exactly. That's what you should do. <laughs> like a breath of fresh air. Thanks very much. Thank, very you, very much thank you very much. Thank you. No, my you. pleasure. And obviously people can pop into Sigmar if they want some more advice. No problem at all. Okay. Oh.